Welcome to the ATG Podcast. I'm Julie Davies, your host, and every week I will be sharing with you love, hope, and faith to bring comfort and healing to those who are suffering. In season one, we're going to be talking all about marriage, and in our Marriage Matters series, we will offer you connection, community, and comfort. We will teach you biblical principles of marriage, offer insights, wisdom, practical tools, and we'll also be interviewing some amazing guests that I'm so excited for you to hear from their powerful stories that will bring inspiration from their own marriages. So I pray that you would be blessed by this podcast and that it would draw you closer to Jesus. In our last episode, we heard from Gerard and Jeannie Long, who talked with us about the purpose of marriage in our Marriage Matters series. They shared with us the first and most important principle and foundation for marriage, which is that it's all about God's glory. And they reminded us again that it's not about us, but it's about Him. So this week, I'm so excited that we get to hear from Gerard and Jeannie again as they talk to us about the cornerstone of a happy marriage. They're going to be teaching us more ways on how to triumph in marriage and talking about the second most important principle and foundation for marriage and also sharing with us practical ways to live that out. And remember, most of us go into marriage um, excited. It's a happy time. We're happy. We're looking forward to the future, to getting married. Um, We're in love. We can't wait to see what God has for us um, for our marriage. But what happens when the unthinkable happens? What happens when unthinkable tragedy hits, when things that seem humanly impossible to bear come to you in marriage? What happens when circumstances are out of your control or hard things happen or losses or hardships or just the unpredictable, the things you didn't think or expect would happen in marriage? How do you have a happy marriage when things aren't happy? Well, for those of you that are listening that have never heard Gerard and Jeannie Long's story, they have a story of unthinkable tragedy. They have had more loss and pain and suffering in their life and in their marriage than most people have in a lifetime. They have lost two out of their three children. And in one of their darkest seasons, after losing their son, um, they almost lost their marriage as well. And thankfully, by the grace of God, they are here to share their wisdom, their story that's so powerful of all the things they've learned that they want to pass on to us. It's just, it's amazing that God is using their pain in their life to bring hope to others, to help other people learn these tools that they've learned and learn um, the wisdom that they have. And they love each other more than ever. And they love Jesus more than ever. And I love the way they talk about this topic today with such joy and love and hope. And so I can't think of anybody better to talk about the cornerstone of a happy marriage than people that have gone through such tough um, storms of life and yet have come out and continue to choose each other, to choose to love Jesus and to love each other. And so... I'm excited for us to hear more from them on, again, the cornerstone of a happy marriage, especially when things aren't happy in our marriage. Last week, we looked at the first and most important foundation stone. And if you remember, we saw that marriage is not about us. First and foremost, it's about Jesus Christ and about him being exalted, about him being glorified in our relationship in our marriage we saw that actually our marriage is meant to show a watching world what God's love really looks like Mm -hmm. and this week we're going to look at the second essential foundation stone for a marriage to triumph now in the bible it talks about four different types of love there's eros which is sexual love uh, the storge which is like family love and then there's philia which is like a friendship type love but the love we're going to focus on this week is the love called agape. This is the love that comes from God directly. The first three are human type of love, and human love can go so far, but then there's a limit to where it can go. The agape love we're talking about is a love that's unconditional. It's a love that's unending. It's a love that goes on and on and on, even when it's not being loved in return. And the wonderful thing is, is that God first pours that love into our hearts 
when we come to faith in Jesus Christ. It says in Romans 5 and verse 5, it says God's love, that's the agape love, is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. What does that love do? Well, I remember so well, Jeannie, you, were, you, you remember that time in 1980 when I had an encounter with God. Yeah. And before that, I was living all for me. And God poured his love into my heart. It was like liquid love. And I fell head over heels in love with Jesus Christ. And from there on, all I wanted to do was to live to please him and bring him glory. I and I, re I remember that was so, so clear. And it to remain strong in my heart ever since. Yeah. That just want to please God and live for him. And one of the important things to understand in our marriage is that as much as I love Jeannie, I know that I can never totally fulfill Jeannie and be all that she hoped I would be as a husband. And the same for, for her, for me. We just can't. We can't meet up to that inner need that we all have. There's only one person that can do that, and that's Jesus Christ. And so the inner part of a Christian marriage has got to be our love for Jesus Christ. Um, it's important to understand that he's the one and he's the one that we're living for, first and foremost. Just listening to you there, I feel so blessed to have a husband, a man of God, that, that loves Jesus so much that um, in the dark days of our marriage that you would continue to love me, um, that agape love that you were talking of mm. um, from your encounter. Mm. Is incredible to me mm. um, and I am so so grateful to God for a, a, a man a husband that loves God um, because I wasn't loving Gerard and it was a very terrible time mm. and I just remember that Gerard continued to love me um, when I didn't love him back and I even it's hard to say now but I hated him mm. Oh, we're through that now, darling. So, so, it's so sad to I talk know. about it. Uh, yeah. But God's, God's caused our marriage to triumph in, in this. And, and it was that love, the agape love at the center of our marriage, which was the foundation stone that we could stand on. Jesus loved the church by laying his life down. It was incredibly painful, wasn't it, when he went to the cross? And sometimes in marriage it is painful. How do we keep on doing it? When you're hurting and you're in great pain, your natural love will come to an end. But this agape love in our heart will not, never come to an end. It keeps on going. And it's the motivation to please Jesus Christ, which is the love that we should have at the center of our marriage. It's a love that says, even though my, my spouse may not be loving me, even though I'm going through a hard time, it's because I love Jesus, I'm going to keep on loving my spouse. And I'm going to keep on laying my life down. Because apart from what I want, I'm here to bring God glory and I want to please him. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do the things that I have asked you to do. So it's the greatest way, actually, we can show our love for Jesus Christ is how we love our spouse. That's a very practical and very real thing to do. Mm. Um, I've always, ever since we got married, I've loved Ecclesiastes 4.12, which is a cord of three strands. It's not easily broken. Um, and as you've heard, that, that is a promise that has proven so true for us. We talked about standing on the promises, and that's one that is um, so special. Yes, yes it is. So the encouragement really uh, for, for all of us is that uh, we cultivate and ensure that our love for Jesus Christ is, is red hot, if you like. Is That's very important, because that's the motivation to do whatever's needed. We have to lay our lives down. I'm willing to do it, because I know it's pleasing him, and that's what love is all about. So... Encourage, encourage us all to, to keep that second foundation stone in our marriage, which is, first and foremost, I'm doing this because I love you, Lord Jesus, and I'll do whatever you want me to do. So thanks for joining us again, and uh, bless say, you. We're doing this because we love Lord Jesus. Yes. It's really <laughs> heart-wrenching. Yeah, yeah. Bless you, bless and you. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Yes, I love what Gerard just shared that the greatest way we can show our love for Jesus Christ is to love our spouse, which is very practical and real to do, as he mentioned. And I pray that you would remember each day the cornerstone of a happy marriage and that the second principle and foundation for marriage is to love Jesus first, which motivates us to keep loving our spouse, especially when it's hard. And I remember when I first met Gerard and Jeannie Long in California about seven years ago. 
And my husband, Mark, and I, we were actually in a pretty tough season of our marriage. We were dealing with a lot of different hard circumstances at the time. We had little girls. He was stressed with his job. We were dealing with financial hardship. I was dealing with sickness and chronic pain and migraines, and we were just so exhausted most days. And honestly, we both um, weren't always liking each other very much or loving each other the way Jesus would want us to. And I remember in that season being so grateful to be knowing Jeannie and to get an opportunity to meet with her on a regular basis and for all the ways that she would encourage me and pray for me and pray for our marriage and share her story and share about um, both the hardships that Gerard and her had gone through, but also the hope of Christ and just speaking truth into my life and sharing scriptures and reminding me of God's love for me and bringing me back to a place of putting Jesus first and helping me see ways that I could love Mark more. And um, I am so grateful that God um, put them in our life to be role models, to show us how to love Jesus and how to love each other more. And especially when on the days when I wasn't living that out and I wasn't feeling that or wasn't, wasn't feeling happy or the circumstances weren't happy. And yet um, Jeannie continued to, to remind me of that cornerstone of um, a happy marriage on loving Jesus first and focusing on my relationship with God which was helping heal my relationship with Mark as well. And so I just encourage you um, to have people in your life, to have other married couples that have gone before you, that maybe have gone through tough stuff, that have um, that are love Jesus and are loving each other well and can role model that and to speak into your life and encourage you and encourage your spouse and you and your marriage. And because we can't do marriage alone and we need each other, and we need role models, and we need mentors, and we need people that, again, are role modeling the kinds of marriage that we long to have, right? And long to desire, and people that can teach us that. Them, those that, again, have gone through maybe tough stuff, maybe similar circumstances that we have, um, and are on the other side of it, and are able to speak life into those situations, and speak hope where things feel hopeless or um, speak encouragement where you feel discouraged um, and speak joy where you just feel sad or frustrated or just don't know what to do. And so again, uh, Gerard and Jeannie Long are my heroes as I say many, many times and I'm grateful for the ways they've impacted my life and Mark's life and our marriage. And I'm grateful for the ways that um, they continue to pray for us and um, throughout that season and help us get through it. And, um, and so again, I pray that you would have community. And if you don't, I would encourage you again to remind you that we are going to be starting our new Marriage Matters um, groups, Zoom groups, that that's a place that you can come and find community and find connection and find comfort and be able to go kind of deeper with some of these teachings that we're hearing on the podcast that we're going to go deeper in community that you can reach out to me again at my email um, that will be at the end of this podcast. And so uh, I'm excited for that. I think that's going to be a time where we can come together and encourage each other and discuss these things and to pray for one another and um, to really lift each other up in our marriages. And I can't wait for next week. Um, on our next episode, I am going to have the opportunity to interview another uh, guest couple for our Marriage Matters series that I can't wait for you to hear. You'll have to listen to hear who's going to be sharing um, with us next week. And it's going to be um, it's going to be a great time where we get to hear from another couple, another marriage that gone through different things and um, and learn new insights and wisdom uh, from their story. And also I just hope more than anything. And I pray that in this next week that you would know more of God's love for you 
and you would receive that love so that you can pour that out um, on your spouse and pour that love out in your marriage. Um, and I just pray that you would remember this message today that would bring you so much hope in your marriage and that you would feel so loved um, by this message and that you would be able to um, just love well this week. So have a great week. Thank you for listening to the ATG podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share this podcast with your friends. And remember, you can always find more helpful resources at our website, awakeningtogod.org. We'd also love to invite you to our Marriage Matters Zoom group, which goes even deeper, offering more connection, community, and comfort. You can email me for more details and the link to the group at julie at awakeningtogod.org. And as always, I am so grateful for you listening to this podcast, and I hope you have a blessed day.